Hey, thanks for listening to the CMC podcast. My name is Noah Tice, and I'm the media director here at CMC. And before we get into our message, I just wanted to plug our young adult ministry, Applied Life Leaders Academy. If you've been listening to us for any amount of time, you'll know that CMC is always about the next generation of leaders. And so Applied Life Leaders Academy has been a major part of our mission for over 37 years. As an alumni of the program, I can tell you that if you know a young person with a call of leadership on their life who has a desire to grow in their personal purpose and ministry, Applied Life is a perfect fit. And for more information, visit AppliedLife.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Applied Life Leaders Academy. And now for a sermon by Pastor Paul Kerr. Well, turn in your Bibles to the book of Ruth, and uh, we're going to be looking at Ruth's life. Um, Man, what a journey. Wow, what a life. We're going to highlight Ruth and her faith. And if if you listen, if you haven't read the story of Ruth, man, go read her story. It's uh, really an encouraging story to look at the life of Ruth and, and just all that she ex- experienced in her life, but it will certainly make this uh, message that I'm going to give much more impactful. It's not real long. It's, it's, it's not a long read. Um, it's something definitely you could do easily, you know, in just a small amount of time sitting down kind of like a, a Devo and read about it, but we'll dive in. So, you know, as I look back over my young adult life, I'm reminded of several of those moments that were stressful. Anybody identify with what I'm talking about? (laughs) Um, You know, had somebody created a manual for how to navigate college back when I was in college, that would have been really good for me to have. Um, I feel like it could have gone a lot easier, just, you know, stress and confusion and frustration not to mention consistently reminding myself that this is what I want to do (laughs) you know because uh, you know when you're in college and you're in the middle of you know test and you're you know it seems like your diploma is way out here and being who you want to be is even further out than that it's easily to get discouraged and kind of lose focus on what you're there for and um, you know a huge portion of college students drop out of college just because they they lose vision and so anyway you know navigating college and then and then next came dating in my young adult life and um, getting into a serious relationship with a gorgeous woman who just happens to be here in this audience tonight yeah absolutely and then, and then learning how to live with that gorgeous woman uh, that I met, and then raising children with that gorgeous woman that uh, God brought into my life and starting a family, all that. And, and, and the fact is, the reason I share this is because there's no easy way to get from where we are to where we want to be. There's just no easy way around it to get to where, from where you are to where you want to be and I guess that's why they call life a journey you know I've heard a lot of people call life a journey because they'll say listen enjoy the journey it's a journey you know people say there is no destination the journey is the destination and you know when you're when you're younger and somebody tells you that you're like that's stupid you know and then when you get my age you look back and go yes that's very much true the Oxford Dictionary defines the word journey as an act of traveling from one place to another. That's the Oxford Dictionary definition, the act of traveling from one place to another place. And the act of traveling from one place to another means navigating the pressure and building up the endurance necessary to help you arrive at each destination along the way in your journey. And, you know, and and facing all that comes in the middle of that journey, the good and the bad, because there's a lot that comes in the middle of different seasons and phases of our life as we're in this journey pursuing what God has for us. And I I think that it's in the middle of the journey that we really have to place our reliance upon God, you know, because it's like you're no longer at the starting line, but you're nowhere near the finish line. You can't even see the finish line. You really don't even know what's over the next hill. 
And so it's just like, okay, God, I'm, I'm in your hands, you know. I'm, I'm kind of running blind here, and I, I have a total reliance upon you. Um, I, I kind of describe it like this. I remember when I was a young boy, um, I grew up out in the country, and my dad would often have me, um, at, you know, I, he had me driving way before I should have been driving. Uh, my dad had me driving big trucks and pulling trailers with tractors and heavy equipment on it when I was 14 years old. And I remember one particular night, my dad said, okay, he got in late and he needed to get a tractor and a tiller moved to another location. And he says, I want you to drive this truck and trailer to this location. I'm going to be out in front of you. He was taking some stuff there too. And um, it, had ju it was turning dusk. It had just finished raining and it produced a whole lot of fog. I mean, the road was really, really foggy. And I remember I, I literally could not see the road. And my dad was always in a hurry and he said, now listen, you stay with me. And so I'm a nervous wreck. I'm, I'm pulling, you know, I'm 14, I'm pulling this big truck, I've got this big trailer, I've got this tractor, the roads are wet, it's very foggy, he's going way too fast. And one of the things that my dad said to me is he said, look, just follow my tail lights." And let me tell you, that, that red glow of those tail lights, I mean, that was like salvation for me. When my dad would top a hill and go down it and those things would disappear, whew, I would get so nervous and so worried that, you know, I'm going to drive this truck off in a ditch. But then I would crest that hill and then there I would see those red tail lights again and I could line myself back up and begin to feel a little more at ease in the midst of this journey from the point that we left to the point to where we're going now I'm right in the middle and then fog sets in and that, you know I think life is like that sometimes it's like you know everything was good and then just all of a sudden a storm hits and now there's fog and I can't see and I really don't know how to navigate and I really don't know where to go and and faith in so many ways becomes the red tail lights you know they glow in the midst of confusion and darkness. That's what faith does for us. It illuminates our path. And, and really reliance upon God is how we get from one pinnacle to the next pinnacle in our walk with him in life. That's how we get from one place to the next. And, and I, 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 I think that's one of the reasons I really love Ruth's story. It's such an awesome, powerful story such an inspiring story I mean Ruth is a woman of faith and clearly we you know we get the opportunity to kind of sit in the grandstands and watch what's going on in Ruth's life and and man it's it's not easy what Ruth faced in her life what Naomi faced in her life and um, I, I think one of the things that I admire about Ruth the most and one of the things that, I, that makes me really love this story so much is that Ruth had lost so much, but she kept going. She didn't let that deter her. She didn't let that stop her. You know, and I, I've seen people who endure much and they quit. You know, they turn their back. They go back the other way and she didn't do that. You know, and, and the fact of the matter is she took a real step of faith. You know, she let go of her misfortune and she had a lot, but she let go of her misfortune, misfortune and she was determined that she was going to follow God at all costs. You know, she just had that kind of faith. And that's such an, ins an inspirational kind of faith. And, you know, I think it's so important that we have that kind of faith. I think it's so important that we display that kind of faith. You know, because that kind of faith is what encourages other people to get from the starting point to the next point in their life. And, and uh you know, Ruth's story started out really tragic. I mean, her, her family was fleeing from a famine. You know, we all know that she lost her husband. Um, not only that, she lost her brother-in-law, and she also lost her father-in-law too. You know, she lost a lot of family, all in a very short period of time. And, you know, loss is, is difficult to deal with, but, you know, compounded by multiple losses in a short period of time, man, you know, that's really... 
that's, that's pretty overwhelming. The pain, the pain of, of that loss in that season must have felt overwhelming to both of these women, Naomi and Ruth. And, and you know, the fact of the matter is, you know, Na- Naomi, Ruth's mother-in-law, um, she insisted that Ruth don't go with her because Naomi knew that the prospects for Ruth going with her were not good. They were not good. Number one, Naomi is a woman. Number two, she's, she's husbandless. Number three, she's on her way to Bethlehem. I mean, basically what Ruth is going to be is a, is a beggar. A husbandless woman in an Eastern culture with nothing. And she's lost her family. And so I get it why Naomi told Ruth, look, don't go with me. You know, you don't want to go with me. I don't have a future. And you're young. As a matter of fact, go, go with me. Look in Ruth with me. And, and let's go to chapter 1. We're not going to look at a lot of verses, but there are a couple that I want to highlight. Ruth chapter 1, and, you know, this, this is a familiar passage. Even if you haven't read Ruth, you've probably heard this preached or heard this sermon said before. So Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. So this is after Naomi told her, look, go, go back to your family. Your, you know, she said, look, she said, before I get into this, she's, let me give you a little context. She, you know, she said, Ruth, I... I can't give you another son-in-law to marry. You know, I'm too old. You're not going to wait around, you know, your, your years for, for that to happen. So go back to your family, remarry, start a new life. And Ruth, here's her response, verse 16. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you will go, I will go. And where you will stay, I will stay. And now listen to this line. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Now, Ruth stayed with Naomi, and and she followed her into Bethlehem. And um, she followed every instruction that was given to her by Naomi. Naomi. Naomi told her everything to do, and Ruth did everything that she told her to do because Ruth respected Naomi, and she loved her. As a matter of fact, the Scripture said she loved her like it was her own mother. So they had a very, um, you know, deep relationship. They were very connected with one another. And, and God saw Ruth's faithfulness, and God saw Ruth's, uh, Ruth's loyalty to Naomi, and he rewarded her for that. He blessed her for that. And as a matter of fact, we know in the story that uh, Ruth was led to this man named Boaz. God just set it up for her. You know, she was out in the fields just trying to gather up some grain so they could survive. They didn't have anything to eat. They're just trying to survive. And, um, you know, it just so happened to be this man's name was Boaz, and he owned this field. And, um, you know, Boaz instructed his workers, look, don't do anything bad to her. Don't lay a hand on her. Don't be mean to her. As a matter of fact, here's what I want you to do. I want you to leave, I want you to leave some pieces behind on purpose for her. You know, and you just see, you know, God's provision there, right? It's like, you know, when we get in places in our life where we just feel like there's just, you know, what are we going to do? You know, what, what's going to happen? How am I going to navigate this? How, how am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to get through this? And, and you just got to know that if, if, you're, if you're walking by faith and you're loyal to the Lord, what God's going to do is he's going to see to it that there's, there's some handfuls left over on purpose for you, just set to the side for you to bless you, to help you. And so, you know, she was led to Boaz, who she would ultimately end up marrying, and Boaz was a good man. He was a part of God's plan for Ruth all along, even though she didn't even know that he was a part of God's plan because God was going before her, see? And that's what God does for people of faith. People who are connected with God and love God, 
God's going before you even though you can't necessarily see it, feel it, or know it. God's working. He's the perpetual worker. He never rests. He's always going before us. And I think one of the things that really makes um, Ruth's faith story so interesting and powerful because, you know, during this time in history, when you think about the Jewish people, just to give you a little backdrop, um, you know, that God, God did not want his people mixing and mingling with other nations of people, okay? God's relationship with the Jews were, it, it was exclusive with them only, okay? He was a God of the Jewish people. And as a matter of fact, God instructed his people, don't, inter, don't intermarry, um, with, with this, but obviously, you know, th this, these instructions were given years and years earlier, and Israel had swayed way off from that, and, you know, now here we have these types of situations just like this. As a matter of fact, in the book of Joshua, you know, we see the conquest of God's people, you know, Moses dies, and Joshua is now given the responsibility of leading the children of Israel into the promised land. And, um, you know, one of the things that God told Joshua in the conquest as he was fighting against these foreign people, look, I have promised you this land, and I want you to go in and conquer and possess the land, and I want you to expel all of these people out of your land. Don't let them stay in your land. And so the Amorites and the Amalekites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Moabites, of which Ruth was a Moabite. And so, you know, we know that Naomi was a Jew and Ruth was a Moabite. And for Ruth, for Ruth to make the statement, your people will be my people and your God will be my God, that was a whole new concept, right? That, what are you talking about? You're not a Jew. God can't be your God and you can't be my people. But, but here's the interesting thing, thing about this. Because of Ruth's faith, God accepted her into his family. Isn't that awesome? And see, that's why our vision this year is the just shall live by, help me, faith. And that's what makes this story even more powerful. And um, in Boaz, Naomi and her daughter-in-law found what the Bible calls a kinsman redeemer. A kinsman redeemer. That, if you read Ruth, that's what Boaz is called. He's called a kinsman redeemer. Now, a kinsman Redeemer, his responsibility to his relatives was to act on behalf of them if they were in trouble, if they had need, if they were, you know, in a bad situation. It was the kinsman redeemer's responsibility to meet the family's need. Well, Boaz was a family relative of Naomi, okay? So it was his responsibility to make sure that Naomi was cared for. So see how God just put this man, as, as Naomi stepped out in faith, as Ruth stepped out into an unknown future, fog everywhere. It doesn't look good, but yet there's this, there's this glowing red light of faith that they just have to fix their eyes on. And it's the same for us. We have to do the same in, the, in circumstances and situations in our lives that we, you know, we just don't know the outcome. And, and Boaz really demonstrates how God expected a kinsman redeemer to respond to a relative's need. And Boaz responded to Naomi and Ruth's plight with compassion. And generosity, I mean, he, he, he literally saved them. I mean, had it not been for him, they would have been in big trouble, 
There's no doubt about it. And so look in Ruth chapter 2. I just want to highlight this with you also. Ruth chapter 2 and uh, verse 10. We'll read verse 10 through 12. And she asked him, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me? Now, this was after he told her, you know, let her have some of the grain and give her a drink of water while, while we're working in the fields and don't bother her, be kind to her, don't talk harshly to her, treat her well, okay? And so here's Ruth, you know, experiencing this. Ruth is experiencing this. And she says, why have I, because she's thinking, I'm a Moabite, right? I'm despised. I'm a woman. And Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you've done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and your mother and your homeland, and you came to live with a people that you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Now, if, if you don't really understand the context of the story, and once again, I, I just want to reiterate, you know, that was not a good decision for Ruth to make to go with Naomi. That was not, that was a bleak future, and, and Ruth knew it. Ruth knew that, that they were probably going to be beggars, that they were probably going to be despised, that this, this was a it would have been a lot easier for her to go back to her family and her relatives. They would have taken care of her. She didn't have any relatives. All she had was Naomi. And yet she chose to go with her anyway. Well, Boaz, you know, he, he understands everything that's going on here. He understands the difficult decision that Ruth made and he sees the love that he has for Na that she has for Naomi to do something like this, and it moved him with generosity and compassion. And the and the really cool thing about this is is Boaz's act foreshadows how Jesus redeems us who are not true Jews. See, we're not true Jews. We're we're like Ruth the Moabite, but we're grafted into the vine. And we're accepted into God's family by faith. So you see that type and shadow there that this is revealing to us. And um, later on in the story, Naomi tells Ruth, here's what I want you to do. Boaz, he's going to lay down to go to sleep. And what you're going to do is, is you're going to go in and you're going to lay down right at his feet. Now, once again, if, understanding context, th this is an act of um, basically saying, I'll be your wife and I'll serve you if you'll accept me by doing this, okay? So she goes and, and she just, I mean, you talk about self-abandonment and humility, so she goes to Boaz and she, in self-abandonment and humility, she lays her life down, are y'all seeing this, at his feet. And what does he do? He accepts her. He accepts her. He marries her. He enters into intimacy with her, in relationship with her. Isn't that beautiful? Because isn't that exactly what the Lord did with each one of us. See, that, that act of, of self-abandonment, and, and that's what has to happen for everyone. You know, I'm gonna be preaching Sunday, and um, I'm really excited what I have to talk about. But this is such an important step in our faith walk. You know, we, we have to have this act of self-abandonment. We have to have this place of humility where we lay it all down at, at God's feet, and then we are redeemed by his marvelous grace. And that's exactly what happened for Ruth. And, and, and Ruth's redemption, as beautiful as it was, it started from a painful past. 
I mean, look, look at what she had endured. Look at what she had gone through. But, but God took this young woman, you know, prompted her heart, and she followed him. And God blessed her, and he met her needs, and he provided for her. And um, th this really led her to one of the most pinnacle points in history because the, the really cool thing about this story, and it just gets more and more awesome as you go along, but because of her faithful actions, you know, Ruth became an essential part of the genealogy of the Messiah because um, Ruth, she became the great, great grandmother of King David, the greatest king who ever lived. And the line, the, geneal the genealogical line by through which the Messiah came. So isn't that amazing? So, so God took this woman who was not a Jew. He opened up his doors to her because of her abandonment and her humility and her faith. And he, he set her literally at the table of royalty. I'm talking about royal, important people are in her family tree. She was the great, great grandmother of King David, the, the greatest king and the greatest kingdom in the history of Israel. Now, the interesting thing here up to this point in history, God was a God of the Jews. But see, God is unfolding and revealing a piece of himself that has not been seen up to this point but now God's opening himself up and God's saying, look, who, who do I pick? Well, whoever picks me. See, we see the universality of God's love. Y'all remember when Jesus was, he was meeting in a house with a bunch of people, a bunch of followers, and um, one of his family members came, or somebody came in and said, hey, Jesus, your, your family is outside. They're waiting on you. You know, your mom's out there, your brothers are out there, they're all out there waiting on you. And Jesus had this incredible response. He didn't go like, oh, okay, guys, I gotta shut this down. It's been great. I'll get with you next week. My family's out here. I gotta go get with my family. And I'm so glad Jesus didn't say that because it would have been like, they're my family, but you're not my family. But here's what Jesus said when that person walked in. He looked around the room and, and he said, who's my mother? Who's my brother? Who's my sister? All of you are. Wow. <laughs> I mean... That's like Jesus saying, look, you, you have a place at the table with me. And, and listen, when you're, when you're grafted into the vine by faith through grace, you got a seat at the Lord's table. And, and when you have a seat at the Lord's table, that means that you have an inheritance. You're not orphaned. You've been adopted. You're not alone you have an inheritance, and you have a father, and you have a family. See, that's why church is so important, because this is just a type and shadow of what the family of God, and we're a part of a big one, praise God. Lots of brothers and sisters and, you know, cousins, and just, it's just awesome. So for the first time ever in Scripture, we see the universality of God's love for all people, not just people born Jews. And the faith of Ruth is what justified her before God, and that faith opened the door of entrance into the kingdom of God. And that's what our faith does. Our faith opens the door to the entrance of the kingdom, and our faith opens the door to accessing our inheritance. Peace, joy, love, power, forgiveness, anointing, all of these things. And so we, we, we look what living by faith 
can accomplish. So Ruth was this woman of faith. She was this loyal woman. And even though she endured so much in her life, she was rewarded for those faithful actions. And the thing that impresses me and encourages me the most about Ruth is that she found strength in God and, and she just followed God no matter what. And, and you know, as I kind of end my time here with you, I, I'm not sure exactly what you're facing or what you may be going through um, right now in your life. I don't know the difficult things that um, are in your past and maybe things that are part even of your, your past. But when we go through some of the roughest times in life, just like Ruth, and this is what I love, this is why I love reading these stories about these heroes of faith. You know, God's wanting us to rely on him. That's what we do. And just like Ruth did, we, we, we need to be faithful and we need to continue to follow God even in our trials. We can't just follow God when things are going good. That's not real faith. That's, that's what I call puffy faith. That's fake faith. That's not strong faith. That's not deep faith. Because oftentimes, you know, through profound struggle, and we see this with Ruth because this was profound struggle, God leads us into abundant blessing, but we have to be willing to hold on. So like I said, as I end my time, I, I want to end with how, I'm, how I started. Life is a journey. It's an act of traveling from one place to another place, and it's in the middle of the journey that we have to place our reliance upon the Lord. You know, just like me when I was that little boy, driving that truck in that foggy night, man, I started panicking when I lost the red glow of those taillights on my dad's truck. I mean, I, I started to panic. I was afraid. But as soon as I crested that hill, man, and I saw those lights, I just all of a sudden, it's like, okay, it's all right. Everything's going to be okay. There he is. He's right out there in front of me. Now, he's a little further out there than he was, so I need to pick up my pace, right? And I need to get in sync with where he is, but there he is. All I have to do is follow him. And, you know, we, we place our reliance on the Lord. We put our faith in his character, and that's how we get from one pinnacle to the next pinnacle to the next pinnacle of our life. Two scriptures, and I'm going to close. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my right, mighty right hand. And then Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6 says, Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. So we, we place our faith in the promises of God, we put our confidence in the character of God and we don't have to fear the future. We don't have to be controlled by our past. What we have to do is just put our faith in God's goodness and in God's faithfulness and God will lead us every step of the way. Amen? Amen. Y'all stand with me tonight. Yeah, give God a hand clap. He's awesome. He's great. He's good. Let's pray together. Father, we just thank you for your words of encouragement. Lord, may we be people of faith as we go from point A to point B. Help us to trust in you. And God, as we do that, we know that we're creating our own legacy. That as people look back on our lives after we're gone from this world, that they will remember that we were men and women of faith and our stories will encourage them as they are in the middle of their race. Lord, help us to be faithful each and every day to display your goodness and your faithfulness to people around us. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. God bless you. Have a great night. Thank you for listening to this message from Christian Ministries Church. If this message impacted you and you'd like to sow into our ministry, you can give at cmchurch.com. If you'd like to listen to more of our messages, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search for Christian Ministries. God bless.